how nice the time progress is that you get that exactly in the first game. I, I was hoping you wouldn't point that out, but <laughs> that was a softball. Uh, it feels good. Um, sadly, that it's been that long. Um, we talked about it the, uh, the other night, actually, uh, an opportunity loss. But, um, you know, to get a little bit of carryover and you, know, you, you wind up winning a tough game late, game that we probably should have put away. But you know, once again, they amped up their pressure. Uh, and and their, their master's at it. Tremont is, is the smartest, smartest defender out there, and he has the ability to play the game within the game. He knows what he's doing. Um, and he's an unbelievable defender. So uh, with his technique and physicality, it got under our skin a little bit. Uh, it disrupted us quite a bit. Uh, but to make plays down the stretch when we needed them, uh, once again, that's an opportunity uh, for guys to show what they're made of. So I was pleased to see us, you know, uh, rid it out. Uh, I think, well, you know, we had that bit of a run, turned the ball over quite a bit in that stretch, but then we calmed down a bit um, and it helped us stay organized. Um, at that point, it was a steal foul game. Guys stepped up, made free throws, and we were to get enough stops, you know, to win it. Corey was great. He, he got going early, um, you know, he's shooting ball with confidence. I know he's, he's had a couple of rough games and he comes in and gets extra shots. Um, so it's not a mystery that he comes out and has a terrific game tonight. Uh, but just the, uh, uh, he's not shy. You know, he's not afraid of the moment. And I know sometimes when you, you miss shots or uh, you start that little self-doubt, you start overthinking it. Uh, but he's got enough confidence. He's put enough time uh, to trust himself. And he stepped up. Oh, it's invaluable. I mean, you know, minutes in general. But, uh, you know, now you got to guard frontline guys and you know, there's nowhere to hide, you know. So, uh, you know, so it's trial by fire and it's not always going to, you know, be good. But you, you can't, once again, you can't simulate any of that. You know, those marquee matchups, uh, those type situations, um, you know, playing, you know, a starter or, you know, certain guys and now you're switching on to an all-star caliber player. Uh, that's a tall task. And it's, it's, it's a good thing for him to have, have to go through that experience. Uh, well, I think it's, you know, it's very emotional regardless. And sometimes you feel that you're, you're getting the short end of it. You know, you look at the free throw disparity, uh, you know, especially in the first half and, and you feel like you're not getting a, a fair shake whether you are or not, um, it's a physical game. Um, and I think he let his, mo his emotions get, get, away with, uh, get, get away from him a bit in the moment. But the fact that he could already right, get past it um, and we didn't lose ourselves. We've seen those type games where teams pressure us, teams may be fouling us, they're, they're ultra physical with us. And now it becomes a uh, us versus them versus the officials type situation. And I didn't think that happened tonight. Oh, sure. I mean, I think there's there's a natural familiarity from their years uh, past. Um, they have that synergy and connectivity, which is good. Um, he already has a feel for where, where KP wants to be, how, he, you know, what spots he wants to be in, um, the rhythm of, you know, the pick and roll, uh, when he's going to pop versus roll, all those little details. I think, you know, as the rest of our guys get a feel for him, Sato has an advantage because uh, he's played. So um, it doesn't necessarily play out but you can feel it. You can tell that there's a there's a synergy with, between that tandem. Regarding how well your team shot from three tonight, a lot of it, I think. I mean, you have to look back at the tape, but you know, I think we've seen that and it showed. You know, we talk about you know paint threes, or you know that, that happens to a lot of ways. Anytime you, you know, ignite a trigger, whether it's a roll, a, a cut transition a rim run all those things are uh, they're, they're more in rhythm and when we shoot those type threes more often than not um, we have good shooting nights and the fact that we also had you know another 30 plus assist night um, 44 field goals I believe 33 assists so that ratio is incredible
Uh, I know you got to make sh shots to get the assist, but that means we're, we're, the vast majority of those shots are of, of high quality. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way we drew it up. <laughs> uh, and that's where, once again, his size and, you know, he's able to see over the defense and it's a heck of a play. They, they bought a double team right back on him. Uh, we weren't spaced correctly. But to your point, because he is 7'3", um, he found the weak side corner and, you know, he stepped up and made a, a big shot. So those type of plays were, you know, really good players bail you out of tough situations. Um, you know, he, he's going to continue to do that for us. Uh, it, was, it was pretty good compared to, to <laughs> the other night we played these guys, uh, gave up 18 threes. Um, you could argue they missed some that they, you know, would ordinarily make. Uh, I thought there was, we had a little bit more urgency. Um, at times it wasn't perfect, but uh, we did a better job with switching uh, small, small actions to take away the quick catch and shoot looks, trying to top and keep those smalls coming up the floor. Um, so just having gone through it, you know, not even two weeks ago, there's a little bit more carryover as far as game plan, a little more understanding. And I thought we were able to execute the better. All right, coach, we'll head to Zoom for a few questions. Wayne. How you doing, coach? First off, uh, the Golden State Warriors never uh, led in this game. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you saw from the defensive effort tonight. I thought in general it was, it was solid. Um, uh, we, we had a better feel and understanding of what we we're trying to do. Our execution overall was, was much better than we saw in the uh, previous matchup. Um, and of course, it helps when you know you don't have Curry on the floor, who, we, as we all have seen, can uh, can go off in a heartbeat. Um, but they're still very dangerous. They've got enough shooting. You know, Bull is is live at all times, and Clay, we've seen the you know the impact he can have. Uh, so, but but in general, you know, I thought we we did a pretty good job of keeping those guys in front and, and under wraps. Um, late in the game, they were able to get downhill. We were trying to stay at home, probably a little too much to take them off the three. Uh, but you know, the, their aggression level early allowed them to get to the free throw line. So that steady parade to the line is what really, you know, kept them afloat, I thought. Um, but in general, I thought it was much better than uh, what we saw two weeks ago. And lastly, Coach, when you look at your previous game and tonight's game, uh, what was one constant thing that you saw in both games that you were proud of? Uh, I, wasn't a, I wasn't proud of a whole lot in that previous game. Um, but uh, tonight, we had, once, once we got going, obviously shot, we made shots early. But I thought we uh, tried to maintain a consistent level of, of defense throughout. Vlad. Um, Coach, hi. Can you talk about the play of Danny Avdia coming off of his career game last game and what you saw from him tonight? Played some clutch minutes there at the end. His plus minus is zero, which doesn't seem to tell the story tonight. No, he did a lot of good things. You know, uh, we talked about it, you know, pregame. He, uh, he got going early in Detroit. Um, it was a good sign to see a, a pretty complete game. Um, didn't shoot it as well in the second half, but his aggression level from the start, um, I think we saw a little carryover tonight. And, and I think that's a, a good sign to see him be able to bring that mindset from game to game. It, it not, won't necessarily mean he's going to average 21 and 10, but uh, to generate similar looks, not, not only for himself, but for his teammates, uh, to play downhill, you know, to be decisive in all his, his, his actions. Um, you know, that that's something he can control. And I think that's a, a great sign for him and for us. Not turning it over. No, I, mean, I know we had some uh, some careless turnovers uh, going down the stretch. Um, so that was a big key, you know, take care of the ball down the stretch, you know, also make the free throws. Corey, Jeff Corey, Jeff Corey, Jeff Corey, Jeff Corey. Um, I mean, Corey, you know, he, 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 a great rookie, I would say that. Um, he uh, he gets in the gym early, you know, gets his shots up. You know, he stays out late, gets shots. You know, he's always ready and prepared. Uh, I call him that. That's that's my basket three buddy. You know, we we work out and shoot together. So just seeing him, you know, have fun, you know, knock down shots like that, uh, and with no hesitation, you know, was was great. You know, every every game he gets better. You know. <laughs> uh it was good i mean uh we we had a couple slippages uh on the uh on our blacks 
when we, they were split, they had they, when they were splitting, um, and so we had trouble with trying to black, you know. Uh, but you no, know, we kind of like slowed down a little bit and got it together, uh, communicated a little better uh, and early, uh, which helped. Um, and you know, we I think this for me, I feel like this is one of our, our best, you know, offensive and defensive game that we had, you know. Uh, and it just felt good just to be out there, be a part of it, you know, with my teammates and, you know, just having fun. What's the difference when uh, It's a bigger guard. So when we do switch one through three, one through four, uh, we don't have to help as much. Um, so, I mean, that's been the biggest key so far. Uh, bigger guard, you know, when we do switch, it helps uh, us stay out of help uh, and we can guard. Um, and play uh, weak side defense, you know, uh, and if we do have to trap and stuff, <coughs> excuse me, um, the rotations are more easier because it, there's no really no mismatch uh, out there. Uh, so, you know, he, he bring that, you know, that that type, you know, to, to the floor. Great professional. Great professional. No, he, he, he stays ready. You know, he always working. You know, somebody once told me, if you, if you stay ready, you got to get ready. And he, he does that to, like, to the best of his ability. You know, his professionalism, professionalism uh, is, 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 like, top notch. You know, come in the gym early, works, staying out late. I mean, staying in late, get shots, you know, encouraging uh, teammates, you know, not even, even if he ain't playing. And when he do get the minutes, uh, he's always playing hard, you know, 100%. How did you see him kind of handle the struggles early on and what does it say about him to get better every single month? Uh, and that's great for him, you know, just to see your, your, your numbers go up every month, you know, shooting percentage. You know, that's always good for a shooter uh, just to see, your, your, you know, your, your progress. Um, man, like I said earlier, you know, he stays in the gym working, you know, shooting the ball. So eventually, you know, he's it's, it's, it's going to knock down shots like he did tonight. So, I mean, I think it's just, it's just good. You know, he continues to stay stay in the gym, keep working, keep shooting. Is it, are you shooting threes or is it literally basket? No, basket three is just, just the, the – we call it the, the basket, just the number. We have four courts, I want to say, in the gym. So, a basket three be uh, – would be our like court that we go to, you know, uh, either we, we locked in or, you know, we call it a vacation spot where we just go over there, you know, we, we having fun shooting, you know, we're a little, little competitive, uh, but some day, most days, you know, it's just all work, you know, we're just getting up shots um, and, you know, just to have him over there, you know, talking to him, you know, um, it's been good for him. Uh, I mean, we'll play a little shooting game, you know, best out of five and in, in, in five spots, you know, shooting the ball or we'll do it off the movement, you know. So it's always a competition, uh, competition over there, you know, so we can shoot the best. Can you tell Corey any advice as far as like the mental approach about, you know, kind of meeting the short term? Uh, I mean, I, I try to talk to everybody, you know, but definitely about, you know, having short, like short term memory, you know, on these losses. Uh, because, you know, we had a back-to-back, -back, which uh, uh, in Detroit, which we we had to let that game go, the game before, and Milwaukee, uh, and to get the win in Detroit. Uh, and it's the same, you know, which you know, each and every game, you know, no matter how you play the, the game before, you know, you, got, you can't let that dictate the next game. Uh, I mean, I feel like that's with everything, you know, shooting, like defending, you know, whatever it is, you know, free throws, whatever, you know, try to have short-term memory because that could, it can dictate, you know, your next move or or your mental, you know, could could mess up uh, your, your, your head space, you know, uh, might be, you know, second-guessing my shot, you know, or second-guessing this pass, you know, or I think I need to be in this spot defensively, you know, but I'm not there, you know. Uh, we don't we don't want that, you know. I feel like it's it's been good for us. All right, KCP, we'll move over to Zoom. We'll take a question from Christos. 
Hey, KCP, great game, great win. Speaking about Corey and his progress as the season goes on, what was the most impressive part from your perspective when you saw him, uh, the work that he put in during this season? What was the most impressive part for you? I mean, I would say just seeing him work, you know, he's always working. Um, and that's a, that's, that's a good trait to have as a rookie. You know, he's always in the gym, you know, early and late. So it's, it's a great trait to have. Nothing conscious, just kind of sticking with it. Um, like I told him when he asked me, like I was aware of it and I wasn't really sure why. Um, and it bothered me. Um, I knew it for a while. And it's not only just the, the numbers, but like the way I felt, you know, like you kind of just feel it. And so um, kind of putting that to bed, at least for a night and shooting really well here uh, felt great. Yeah, it's great, man. We're on a win streak now. So um, it's been a long time since we've won two games in a row and kind of getting in the winning column twice, uh, twice in a row is huge for us. Uh, when you get a combination of guys playing really well and us playing winning basketball, I mean, that's the stuff that only a few teams in the NBA get to enjoy year in and year out. So um, being able to do that, um, we're hoping we can capitalize and keep building um, and keep playing the right way and uh, the wins will take care of themselves. Um, when we play a certain brand of basketball, we can we have a chance of beating any team in the league. <laughs> oh, he's the best. He's the best. He's always encouraging, always uh, giving me advice, um, calming me down if I need it. If I need it. Um, he was hyping me up tonight. Um, spent a lot of time with KCP working out over this course of this year, and uh, I've learned a ton. So, um, yeah, the you know we find our beach at about you know 10:30 a.m. every day over on that basket in the practice facility, and um, feels just as good as kind of putting your toes in the sand. Yeah, I knew I was getting close, um, but I mean, it feels great. Yeah, it does, and. Um, the credit goes to the coaches and the guys on my team, um, you know, finding me in, in positions to put me, to make me successful. Um, uh, you know, I kind of, I feel good, I feel really good about it, but I also played a lot more games than Brad did his rookie year. So, um, you know, a lot more threes to be had and I hopefully, hopefully can, you know, expand that record and, um, keep rallying up the total before the season's over. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of my calling card. That's the reason why I'm here. Um, you need an elite skill to be an NBA player, and mine's shooting it. So um, it was it sucked to not shoot it well to start um, and kind of getting back in my rhythm and um, finding the bottom of the net more often now um, makes me feel really good. And, you know, I'm able to do, you know, stuff on top of that too uh, to keep the defense honest as well. So just rounding out the game and making it more um, – Whole. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's that's a shot I practice. You know, I just haven't done do it very much in games, and um, you know, you're just kind of in that zone, and things happen naturally. And um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of time left for the season, so. Uh, the way that I can expand my game, you can you just there's limited opportunities, um, but definitely looking forward to um, my chances to to really grow and really develop and um, expand the game, make me a better player. I mean, there's just more expectation, I guess. I mean, I lo I love it. I, I, there's, I mean, I don't really view it as much of a challenge. It's more of an opportunity. Um, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, you got to guard tough, guard the other guy's starters. So I mean, it's good players. And, um, you know, I'm learning every single day on that side of the floor, like just the matchups and who I'm guarding and uh, what they do in personnel. Like 
I just have to be a sponge. And, um, you know, I don't have the advantage of playing for five years and going against certain guys for five years, knowing what they're doing. So um, every day is a learning opportunity there and I'm soaking it up and I'm getting better and better on that side of the floor too. Yeah, totally. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think KP is really that mad about that. Like, I, I really think that he's smart enough to know that like we needed a kick in the pants and like, this is how, this is how it's going to happen. And, you know, you see coaches do that sometimes, um, you know, to kind of get the players going and keep us, um, keep us going. And um, that, that moment, you know, along with a few others kind of gave us the push that we needed in order to you know, pull that game out tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, number one, working my tail off. I am so excited because I have a really clear picture of what I want to work on and what I want to do. Um, you know, I'm going to take a little bit of time off at the beginning just to let my body recover and, you know, not see a basketball for a while. I think that's healthy. And then um, get straight to work. I'll be back on the West coast for most of it. Um, seeing family and um, kind of be with friends and then uh, really get into work and really working on growing my game. Yeah. Um, I think first of all, I need to get more mobile and flexible. Um, it's kind of an off the court thing, but um, I'm very stiff, very tight. And so that could, that could only help me getting, getting more flexible on the floor, um, putting the ball in the deck, creating my own shot, um, stuff in pick and roll, um, just kind of little things to kind of help me be a little bit more multifaceted and uh, score in different ways. Uh, I just think that like, you know, over a course of an 82 game season, like if your hamstrings aren't loose, your hips aren't loose, like they start to really get tight and it affects other things. So if you're, you know, hamstrings tight, it pulls on your back and your back hurts all of a sudden, or, um, you know, if your ankles aren't flexible, then you're compensating with your hip and then your hip gets sore. So just being more loose and flexible and mobile. Um, and also it helps on defense too. You're able to get lower, slide more, slide easier. Um, if you have more mobile hips. So, um, that's, that's kind of been a bucket list thing of mine for a while and plan on taking care of it this summer. Yeah, a uh, couple things. Number one, it is a long season and there are so many games. So just because you have a bad stretch of five, that feels like an eternity to someone like me who's new. But for everybody else, it's just like a blip on the radar. And there's so many opportunities to fix it. Um, uh, another thing, um, it's never easy. Um, there were so many times where anybody on the team, including me, could have gotten down and out and quit or kind of let frustration take over. Um, but that's part of it. That's part of why this league is so great is because, you know, no matter if you're LeBron or you're if the 15th player on, you know, a non-playoff team, like everybody struggles here in the league. And it's about how you work with them and how you overcome them. That makes special players special. So um, kind of inviting struggle with open arms, um, taking that on and um, coming out better on the other side. And I think that's kind of a testament to why I am where I am at the end of the season. It's how I dealt with struggle. All right, Corey, we'll go to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Corey, uh, congrats on the career high and the franchise record. Brad, you know, was giving you the game ball, things like that. I guess, you know, what were some of the things that he was saying to you and, you know, maybe words of encouragement? Well, he said, congrats. He said, um, you deserve it, and don't you dare stop shooting it. So, um the Brad's a huge reason why, why I got that, that record. Um, not only does he pass it really, really well, he also attracts so much attention. So 
I would be an idiot to not credit a lot of that to him. And with how engaged he's been after he's gotten hurt has only helped me and it's helped other players to become better. So a lot of credit goes to Brad uh, for the kind of leader he is. And then not to hit a sore subject, but I guess, did you and Rui have any kind of bet with uh, Daniel Gafford? Yeah. Um, Gaff can, Gaff has a hundred pushups in the bank and he can make me do pushups whenever he wants. So uh, he's used about 10 of them. And if you see me kind of drop down and do a push-up and warm-ups or in a t- huddle during a timeout, like, that's the reason why. And, yeah, it's still a sore subject. That's a 100 for both you and Rui? Yeah. Gotcha. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> we'll go to Jim. <laughs> Hi, uh, Corey. Corey, do you feel maybe that the Eastern Standard, Eastern Conference at the moment where you find yourselves – is that a true reflection, maybe in 12th place, or do you feel that you should be in contention for that play-in series? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we I think we can definitely make noise if we get in, but we let a lot of games slip during the, the meat of the season, and um, it's kind of on us because it might be a little too little too late. So we're going to do everything we can in our power to control our destiny. Um, but, you know, the reality of it is – we were the ones who kind of let the foot off the gas after that great start we had. And, you know, now we find ourselves in the place we are. Cheers. We'll go to Christos. Hey, Corey, great game, first of all. Uh, For you as a shooter, to see your shots falling uh, early in the the game, how, how big confidence booster for you was? Oh, yeah. I mean, the game slows down immediately. Um, You feel like every shot you take is going in. Uh, just things like that. And to see, you know, the way that my shot making early allowed other guys to score and have freedom was really good too. That was part of the reason why we had such a great, you know, offensive effort, you know, against a great team. So um, did nothing but help us uh, throughout the entire game. And you mentioned before that, but what Bradley Bill told you after the record, the confidence that your teammates have to you, what does it mean? How how uh, what, how how do you react in this confidence? Oh, I mean, it means the world. Um, these guys have been a lot of places and seen a lot of players, and the fact that they believe in me to make shots and to give me the ball when they could as easily shoot it themselves, uh, whether it's Brad or KCP or Kuz or uh, KP, um, it means a ton. So. I'm going to take it and run with it and hopefully make good on their confidence. And, um, you know, whatever, whatever happens, I'm just going to keep shooting it.